I am a medical oncologist. I currently work at the University of Colorado and I dedicate my all clinical and research time to patients with sarcoma. I do see patients with desmoid tumors as well. Um, I have trained uh, uh, partly in the UK and partly in Italy. And during my fellowship in sarcoma in the United Kingdom in London, I was fortunate to join a desmoid tumor dedicated clinic that was brand new and set up by my then attending. And I think I just fell in love with this disease, this patient, and I wanted to do more about it. Desmoid tumors are connective soft tissue tumors. They are um, defined as non-malignant, which means they don't have capability to metastasize, but they can be locally aggressive. The patients that are most likely to get desmoid tumors are younger patients. Um, generally, the median age is 36 years old, and most of them are aged between 20 and 44 years old and women are two or three fold most likely to be diagnosed with the desmoid tumors than men. How they can present, they normally present with a mass can be new or can be newly painful so it can be a mass that has been there for for a while um, normally patients come to clinic because yeah they either see a new growth or they have pain or they have uh, decreased mobility so they can be very very challenging for either their symptoms or the patient population or the um, just array of behavior This is very interesting, actually. So unfortunately, it is common for many of these patients to be uh, misdiagnosed or at least to experience a significant delay in diagnosis. Um, in fact, as my tumors, many times they can present as a mass and they are they're difficult to diagnose. Many times they get mistaken for um different type of sarcomas or lipomas, or sometimes, yeah, for different type of sarcomas, which are more aggressive, like GIST or sarcomas. What is the journey? Um, so I always recommend when any patient has a new lump or a new bump to just uh, go to a doctor and ask for imaging first. The first uh, best step is always some sort of imaging, most commonly an ultrasound, just because it's more accessible. It is important to say that imaging ultrasound, MRI or CAT scans, they are not diagnostic. They can only reveal the presence of a mass. What is diagnostic is a sample of the tissue, which means um, just a small biopsy can be done through a needle. Uh, the tissue then is looked under the microscope and there are specific stains for desmoid tumors. Um, they can be done and it, it is important that the tissue is reviewed by a soft tissue and bone pathologist. It is important to get early diagnosis because many times they can be very symptomatic and they have, because as we said these are young patients so they are they're trying to work they are in their prime of their life so um because we have effective treatments now it is very crucial for them to get to the timely and correct diagnosis also because um, the pattern of this disease sometimes desmoid can be stable for a long time some other times they tend to grow and their pattern of grow is uh, infiltrative so they can cause significant not just pain but also um, damage if they depending on what where are they growing from if they grow near joint or intra-abdominally they can cause significant damage so that this is why it's important to get to a timely diagnosis and also a correct diagnosis because a wrong diagnosis can cause the wrong treatment. So my advice is to look for a sarcoma center because desmoid tumors are really rare. So we have about 1,000 or 1,500 new cases in the U.S. per year. So you, you can understand that with the huge size of this country, uh, if you go to a general oncologist, odds are that they have only seen a few desmoids in their careers or maybe none. So it is very, very important to go to a sarcoma center because treatments they have been employed for very for many decades are not currently the preferred treatment anymore, such surgery. Um, so it is important to have to be managed properly. 
So typically, there is a very nice consensus paper for Desmoid, uh, where many experts got in the same room and really brainstormed what is the best management for Desmoid. Because uh, we mentioned very briefly that they're heterogeneous. So if you take many patients with Desmoid, some of them will have an indolent disease with no pain or and possibly no growth. And some other ones have very symptomatic disease. So the first thing is to understand who are the patients that can be observed through active surveillance uh, uh, in the first instance and who are the patients that actually need treatment. So that is the main point, um, understand who needs treatment and who not. And obviously, um, only an expert um, oncologist can make that call. Um, and then regarding treatment, generally surgery is discouraged right now because there is a high risk of tumor recurrence after resection. Even for those resections, they seem to be complete. Um, and this is due to the biology and the behavior of the tumor. Desmoid tumors tend to grow and they tend to infiltrate the growth through the facial planes. So it is really challenging to achieve a complete resection. And also a resection can be very morbid. Um, so the best treatment uh, right now is medical treatment generally, systemic treatment. There is a, um, a new tool. It's I think it's very informative um, and it's important to share with patients is desmoidtumor.com um, because one of the issues, despite the delay on diagnosis and mismanagement, uh, one of the main issues that these patients face is um, isolation. Being so rare, being this disease so rare, it is common, it is uncommon for patients to know someone else that has been diagnosed with desmoid, um, with a desmoid tumor. So it is important that they they know how other patients have gone through and what the journey looks like. I think this is really um this is something that it's extremely important at uh, diagnosis for a patient to just know how their journey may look like and what others have been through.